Alrighty then, so welcome to Idinwe, uh, episode one, uh, or may, well I suppose technically episode two, I may have even called the previous episode episode one, however things have changed since then. Anyway, without further, further ado and landing my waffle copter, um, so the next p thing that I want to talk about is some walls, which as I've shown you briefly in episode zero, uh, I tend to use some uh, cut down strip wood and just paint that in some greys because you can, I haven't got some to hand right now, but then you could just, there's a wall and then I've got varying lengths of it so I can build very, very um, simply and I can go as complicated with shapes as I like and you don't get, get any lost space. Um, but however... I took a swing at making some more complicated walls for like the backs of caves and caverns and stuff just to make a bit more detail. Now what I used to make these, it's not. Um, there's a little bit of a, a hands up because the foam that I've used to make these, that's right they made of foam, isn't the best. In fact it's pretty poor, however it's all that I can get hold of, so it's what I've used. If you can get hold of a pink or blue insulation board, I advise that you use that and that you can actually, by doing so, you can skip one of the steps I used to make these. So without further ado, I'll get on with my explanation of how I went about making these. And, well, well I'm actually going to show you how to make one because I want to make some, um, well, there's a wall, this is a cave. It's, they're all made the exact same way, just by carving different shapes. Uh, I've made some internal corners, so, which is just by cutting two pieces of foam, carving one, m matching the other one up and then carving it so that it looks like a, a natural formation. And then there's shorter sections and then there's a small cave entrance and even a small waterfall, which is th the exact same method, just painted blue instead and I just etched, dug it in so that it looks like it's eroded away some of the stone. So yeah, how I went about making making this stuff is I just clear it, clear this away, and uh, get it out of my way. I use this, which is an insulation board. It goes by many different names, but it's just the cheap. It's by um, by the technical term, the cheap stuff. I cut this into inch thicknesses because it gives you plenty of space to carve into it. Um, what I've been typically doing most of my wall sections are four inches. It's two inches tall. But, so you end up with four inches by two inches by one inch, and then it'll be. Um, if I can just lay my hands on a marker pen quickly. Uh, so I want to be making some ex external corners because it's all that I'm missing from my set right now. I know in the grand scheme of things I should have shown you guys me making all of this. However, I didn't think of making videos then. So what I'm doing is making a wait. I'm just going to double check myself here. Okay then, okay then, I'm actually off there. I want to be doing this by two inch by two inch, see? Not scripted at all. I'm making it, I'm literally making this up as I go. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to drift off camera a little bit. I'm ju um, I assure you, I'm not doing any, man any sneaky business. It's just marking it increments of two inches. So one, two, one, two, three, I want four of these, so, oh, just enough foam. Uh, yeah, I buy, it in the UK, I get my insula this insulation foam, which is the poor stuff. I get it from a store called Wix. It's available pretty much any sort of building suppliers because it gets used widely because it's cheap. And I suppose it is effective when it's used for its pr uh, actual proper use. Um, but the problem with this stuff is that it crumbles, like it wears away just by handling it. The pink and blue foam, yes, it still does, but it's an awful lot hardier. And this stuff, you can, you can, it's so much so that you can actually sand it with your bare hands. So I'm just taking a uh, razor knife and uh, two inch sections. And uh, notice I don't bother measuring the entire piece because for how it all goes together, that accuracy isn't really required. So, cut all the pieces out. Now I'm only going to be making one of these on camera because you guys don't need to see all that. Right, this is the off-cut piece. Now look, this is how easy. And 
I've just rounded the edge off of that. That's how easy this stuff is to sand. It's ridiculous. Also, there's these fibers that can be a pain in the backside because, as you can see, it leaves an indentation and a seam on the foam. And they are fibers that are woven into the foam by pro product of its design. They can be a pain in the butt. You can get around them, but once again. So the next step that goes into these is obviously the sculpting. Um, that takes a little bit more time. Um, but all I tend to do when I'm carving these walls is I will... Um, start by making a, uh, a long cut across the top just to make a bit of a bevel and it's actually a saving grace with this stuff because it's so crumbly when you cut it um, you can just sand it back together with your bare hands so what I'm saying is a bad thing is also a good thing for it okay so bearing in mind that a good portion of this is going to be seamed to the another piece of foam so like this or kind of like this they'll be at a 45 degree angle to each other uh, oh, actually, no. Ooh, that's, I, ne I nearly messed that up. Once again, completely unscripted. So the backs of these is what's going to be. So it's, a, it's an external angle, so it'll be kind of like, yeah, you get the idea. So I can actually freeform with the entirety of this outside piece. And all I do is I'll make one downwards cut in a, in a strange angle. And then I'll make another one at the opposite, opposite direction. And you end up hacking semi-amorphous lumps out of the foam and you can go try not to be um, there's no such thing in, in um, human life as random but try not to make everything identical and so there's there's that and I'll just carve up the other ones to match up with it so and I'll be back in a moment okay so um, I fitted it all together and just hot glued it and then trimmed the, anything that spurges out of the seam. You can see the seam right there. Um, cut it at a 45 degree angle so that you end up with the two pieces fitting flush together and then just sculpted it so that it looks relatively close to, I guess, a natural rock wall maybe. Um, I've then uh, based it and backed it with um, just some cardboard. That is less necessary with the pink or blue foam than it is with this foam this foam with the crumbling problem I don't want to have to do what I'm going to do in a moment to texture this and then paint it all to seal it all up um, just so that it isn't going to crumble away on me so the easiest option for that was to just um, base it and back it with some card so anyway on to texturing so how I I've textured the uh, other stone walls like so is by taking hot glue and getting you got to get your hot glue gun nice and hot i've got a large hot glue gun at the moment i'm in the process of procuring a smaller one for some finer work and then it is trying to work while the glue is still hot making some rapid some rapid movements but rapid with intent it's not just all over the place because you'll end up with problems adding a little bit more glue while you go sure why not um, for the cardboard that's at the bottom of this, I want to also cover that up so that it's, all, it's more seamless. And then as the glue's settling, starting to settle, starting to cure, you can use the, um, the hot tip of the glue gun to manipulate it to make it just a little bit better. Um, but then I'm just going to go ahead and do the other end. Or I also do the, the uh, flat, flat edges as well, although I don't really bother with the texture so much for there because commonly they're going to be butted up to the other walls and I don't want any like gaps appearing because of the striations that I've added uh, into the rock wall. So yeah, there's, so after doing this, it doesn't look like much at the moment because the glue is clear. You want to try and get as good a coverage as you want, especially with, with uh, insulation foam because of the next step, which is spray paint. I also do a texture on the top, but that is in a nutshell, as I say, it doesn't look particularly great, but if I reflect it, you can see there are different levels to the glue. Um, and all of those will pick up when it comes to painting. So that can be ignored right now. Um, so the next step is to spray paint it, and that's why it's important to make sure you get the glue coverage, even with deep pink or blue foam, because most spray paints will dissolve the foam, which can be cool for some effects, but not for what I'm trying to do right here because it's more random because you don't know is it going to eat it a lot or is it just going to sizzle the edges. You just can't be sure. So for the purposes of this, 
we want it all sealed up which is another reason for backing and undersiding this so that you haven't got to worry about it eating through from the back you can just do a ring of hot glue cardboard on the back forget about it right so that does that one the next uh, I'll do another cut all right so um, I've gone ahead and painted all of these black I actually didn't spray them in the end although it is the more efficient means um, I just painted them up um, black all over so any of you that are familiar with a te painting technique called known as dry brushing this will be very fam this will be very familiar to you but basically you want to take uh, your first color which I've just mixed together a dark gray um, and you want to use a paper towel to take off quite a lot of the paint and then it's not sure how well this first color is going to show up on camera really because it is quite dark but it just it um, this is what's referred to as a heavy dry brush so this is there's still a fair amount of paint on the brush you can see a slight difference in the coloring there and basically it's the raised hot glue and whatever else is picking up all of this and also some of the um, the exposed foam underneath that I missed with the glue um, so yeah just going about doing all this uh, lovely and quick way of doing things it's I've, that's why I've gone ahead and gotten all four of these walls sorted because I'm just going to go ahead and get them all done right now uh, while I'm doing this though I've had a brief chat well not a brief chat a, I've had a correspondence with a few of the people that have inspired me to uh, make terrain as it were and I'm going to link all their channels below uh, first of all there's um, got to be the biggest shout out to uh, DM Scotty of the, the DM's craft and he's uh, the like inventor of the 2.5D crafting system for Dungeons and Dragons using like tiles and stuff with semi-raised wall features etc and then um, cr creating detailed pieces of a 3D environment which is how, where I took my inspiration from but as we as we go on you'll see like my um, creative uh, influences onto the designs that I took from watching his videos. Then uh, following that there's the the DMG uh, who he comes up he follows kind of the same means and methods of the 2.5D but he's shown a lot of like you could say kind of specialist tiles and stuff to game with and more once again more detailed pieces because the more set dressing you've got the reason why I'm at the moment doing an awful lot of set dressing for uh, my games is not only because I've got the free time available over the winter break but it's also because um, it's like when you, your players go into a room and there's a door and there's a bookcase and there's a table but then they go into another room and there's another door and there's a bookcase and there's a table and they all look identical it kind of breaks immersion a little bit because you, yeah I'm not saying that you've got to have 50,000 of everything it's just you could have them walk into a room and instead of it being bookcase it could just be some shelving with some items on it or whatever else and they don't even have to be items that are going to be particularly influential in the game itself right um anyway i uh, just land my waffle copter for a moment um so that was the uh, primary coat put down as i said it's not really going to show up fantastically on the camera you can see it's just like dulled really uh, the next step though, even though that's a little bit wet in some places, it doesn't matter colossally to this. Uh, now I've got just a very light grey, which is I've been I'm using a um, the first the first grey that um, grey that I was using was just black and white mixed. Uh, this one on the other hand is a, a model colour. I think these are by Vallejo, and this is just a new, uh, neutral grey that I'm using. And then it's this is a bit more controlled of a dry brush. This is like you could, I suppose you could call it a proper dry brush. And all this is is you should see this immediately highlighting. I'm working on the edge first, and then there's some raised details there. And try not to do when you're doing this. Try not to like chain going backwards and forwards with your brush is absolutely fine. But try not to then change your orientation. Like don't start going like. Um, top to bottom because then the the textures that you're picking out will start looking a little bit funky uh, don't forget the edges so as I say this is all this is very quick and very dirty but that's part of why I like it it doesn't 
it's not taking a vast investment of your time you can make a big set of these in an entire day which is what I've gone and done um, right so anyway going back to what I was saying so you've got the uh, the DMG making the more specialist tiles then more recently there's a couple of channels that I've um, I've followed there is a uh, Wylock he makes a a uh, different variation of like the card tiled method. He uh, makes them to a slightly different scale with like doorways and that that actually socket onto the tiles, which is interesting. And he also makes some cool detail objects. My uh, the treasure piles I use are actually influenced by the ones that he showed in his pictures. Um, so like what these guys have demonstrated in their videos, I might touch on them slightly if I've like my influences onto like say the treasure piles where I've added this or that just to make them a bit different but if you guys are interested in seeing how they're originally they were originally created then I will always link in the um, description below where the original video came from because I don't I don't want to repost other people's ideas that's not the idea we're all here to stand stand on each other stand on each other that sounds like a mess uh, stand but stand with each other we, and we can all move forward together um, right so uh, I'm also going to do as I said in uh, I think video one which no this is video one so video zero I think I said it in was um, I'm planning on doing some like waffly videos where I'm just chatting about either my experiences with D&D &D as both a player and as a DM because I'm virtually new to the new to the game, I've got this year under my belt, but it's been a bit um, hit and miss. It's been a little bit all over the place, like getting days that we can play, etc. So even though it's been technically a year that I've been DMing and playing, it's been less than that because of obligations of myself or party members, and you need uh, ideally like three people to make a party. And uh, yeah, so it's I've got some bits and pieces. Also, um, I'll also probably waffle about um, ideas that I've got to throw in, and maybe it'll give you some ideas, or maybe you can give me some feedback on my ideas, because you can never have too much of a good thing, and D and D is a good thing. And there you have it. So uh, I've just thrown a few bits of scatter stuff in here just for just to fill up some space and make it a little bit more interesting. However, this is just to show off. This is probably about half of what I've managed to make out, and this has taken virtually none of the foam. It's taken a fair amount of hot glue, but as I explained in part one of this video, that um, the hot glue stage and the facing with the back and bottom with cardboard can be avoided by getting the pink or blue foam. But other than that, I think this looks pretty pretty good. Um, obviously, it's only single faced, but you've usually always got like a primary face towards your party. So uh, yeah, I think this looks pretty good. It's good for backing, uh, maybe for a bit more, int just a bit more diversity. And yeah, so hopefully you've liked this video. Uh, this has been a bit of a longer video than what I'm probably going to do in future. Um, or maybe it's shorter. Um, still, I'm still getting the hang of this, so bear with me. And I will uh, um, get on to making some more videos. And I will see you guys next time. Uh, feel free to leave comments below. Any um, cr any critique or adjustments that I can make to my setup. Uh, just let me know. And uh, um, I'll see what I can do. So thanks.